Hi, welcome to this demo of OCI Container Instances. OCI Container Instances is a serverless compute service to run containers without managing any servers. In this demo, we'll learn how to run containerized applications using container instances. I'll deploy a WordPress application on a container instance. As part of this application, I'll deploy both application as well as database containers on the same instance. To access container instances on OCI console, you can navigate to developer services and select container instances. Then you can click on create container instance to launch a simple guided experience that will help you create a container instance. On the first step, you can specify basic details about the container instance. Let me start by changing the default name to WordPress. I'll keep the current compartment. Then you can specify a placement configuration, which allows you to choose where to place your container instance. You can select an availability domain. If you want, you can also select a fault domain or let Oracle choose the best fault domain for you. After this, you can select your preferred OCI compute shape for the container instance. Container instances allow you to specify all the CPUs and memory supported by the underlying compute shape. In this case, since I've selected E4, I can allocate up to 64 cores and up to 1 TB of memory to my container instance. I'm going to keep the default one core and allocate 4 GB of memory to my instance. Then you can specify networking configuration. As part of this configuration, you can select a subnet in your VCN to which the container instance should connect to. You can select an existing VCN or create a new VCN or you can enter a subnet OC directly. I'll keep the default VCN that has already been selected. You can select an existing public or private subnet or you can choose to create a new subnet. If you have selected a public subnet, you can choose to assign a public IP address to your instance. This allows you to access your application on a public IP address. Now let's take a look at advanced networking options. You can use a network security group in your VCN to control ingress and egress traffic for your application. You can also enable source destination check. Optionally, you can specify a private IP address for your container instance. You can also choose to assign a private DNS record to your container instance. And optionally, you can specify a host name, which is used in the auto-generated fully qualified domain name. Now let's take a look at advanced options that are set at the container instance level. Using graceful shutdown timeout, you can define the amount of time containers get to gracefully stop. Then you can specify a container restart policy. This determines whether containers are automatically restarted. You can choose from these three options, always, never, or on failure. I'm going to select always and click on next. On the next step, you can specify the container images for the containers that you want to run and you can also optionally specify additional launch configuration for the containers. I'm going to start by adding database container. Let me change its name to DB and click on select image. OCI container instances allow you to pull images from OCI container registry or any external registry as long as it is open container initiative compliant. By default, the external registry is Docker Hub. From this registry, I'm going to pull the official MySQL database image. I'll also specify a tag to indicate the version that I want to pull. Once you have specified the image, you can also define environment variables to pass values for various configuration parameters. In this case, I'm going to set environment variables to define the database configuration. Remember, this kind of a setup is useful for development and testing. For production deployments, you may want to create an external database instance. 
and have your application container connect to that instance. Now let's take a look at advanced container launch configuration options. Under resources, you can enable resource throttling to restrict the amount of resources that a particular container can consume. This is useful when you are running multiple containers on the same instance and you want to restrict the amount of resources that they can consume. Under startup options, you can specify working directory for your container. Using the command option, you can override the container's entry point process that's defined in the container image. And using entry point arguments, you can pass arguments to the entry point process. In this case, for the MySQL container, I want to pass an entry point argument to select MySQL native password authentication. Now I'm going to add another container. This is the application container that I want to run. Uh, let me change name to app and click on select image. Here I'm going to pull the official WordPress image from Docker Hub. I want to pull latest image so I don't need to specify a tag. And then uh, I need to specify environment variables for database connection configuration. When you are running more than one containers on the same instance, those containers are co-located and they share the networking namespace. This allows containers to communicate with each other over localhost or loopback interface. I'm going to provide the loopback interface IP here. I've added the rest of database connection configuration. Now let me click on next. Finally, you can review all the container instance launch configuration and click on create. This will start creation of the container instance and also launch containers you have specified on that container instance. All right, container instance has started successfully and both the containers are now running. Here you can see all the information about your container instance. Now let me go ahead and copy the public IP address and try to access this application. I'm not able to access this application because I have not configured a network security group that allows traffic on port 80. So I'm going to go ahead and select a network security group that I have already created. This network security group allows traffic on port 80. And as you can see, I'm now able to access the application and I can go ahead and configure. And this is how you can create a multi-container application using OCI container instances without having to manage any servers. Now let me go back to container instances console and let's take a look at built-in logs and metrics that are provided. First, let's take a look at metrics. These are the built-in metrics that are provided with container instances. Using these metrics, you can monitor CPU utilization or memory utilization. You can see both the absolute and percentage values. You can also monitor the ephemeral storage used by the containers. Now let's click on the application container and take a look at the logs. So this is how you can also see container logs in OCI console. This concludes the demonstration of how you can launch containerized applications on OCI container instances. Thank you.